welcome back hold of him blade reviews we have the windless steel crafts european sword very original name for this blade um, but it's very simple design We've got a nice cross guard which gives us some specs on it some up close looks and of course some cut testing keep in mind um, this is a pre-owned um, it has a little bit of rust on it just some topical rust now obviously when you get this blade you're not going to have that unless you buy a pre-owned knowing that i'm not going to send you a brand new sword that has a bunch of rust spots on it um, I didn't get a chance to really take, take it and clean it with some of the rust pads that we have, but um, just keep that in mind throughout the video. Let's get to it. All right, overall length 40 inches all the way from the peen pommel to the very tip of the sword. This is a pretty long blade, um, pretty awesome design. It's kind of like more like an arming sword than anything, but uh, it's got a lot more range to it. 33 and three quarter inch blade. Why? Not really sure. But I do know that it's giving you full head protection on top, and without having to duck down or change your elevation, you're also getting full protection of your knee. That way if you're fighting against a spear, other unequal length weapons, or if you are on horseback, you can just hit the drive-by and then get the hell out of there in that hypothetical medieval combat scenario. A high carbon steel blade is always one that does that. I'm gonna put the scabbard down for a second. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Got a nice cross guard here, protecting the hand, slightly swept up. The glancing blows will go away from your hand instead of toward your hand because why would you want to go toward your hand? It needs to go away so you protect your hand. The handle itself, we have a wood core with a leather wrapped handle. If you're not familiar with windlass, it has the traditional stitching that they always put on there, their signature stitching rather. And the handle is tapered. So forefinger, excuse me, pointer finger and middle finger have the thickest part of the grip while the ring finger and pinky have the thinner part of it that slides down into the pommel. The pommel sits very gently into the hand. The heel of the hand is in the pommel. It's not digging into it like you would see in some Viking style handles that are really, really short and compacted. Um, I don't really care about how you want to hold the blade. I'm more of just showing you it as a demonstration so you can really understand how this blade looks and how it'll feel in your hand. So pommel, like I said before, it is a peen pommel. You can see the hammer marks, kind of a more glossy one. And again, if you see any kind of corrosion or abrasion, it's just lightly from a pre-owned sword. So I don't think you're gonna get it looking like that unless you buy it pre-owned. Like I said before, leather wrap handle, slightly tacky, giving you enough room on here if you want to wear a gauntlet. So it still gives you that ability. A lot of range on this. It's a double-edged blade, it's just sharpened. Got your slashing ability here. Very, very big, broad slashes. I mean, if I even take a step back, you got a whole lot of range here. Even coming on the upward strikes, a lot of range for you to work with. So, gotta know what you're doing. Don't run a double-edged sword into yourself and then tell me that I'm the one who told you to do it. <laughs> um, always get proper training and know what you're doing before handling any type of weaponry, especially edge weaponry. So yeah, double edge. If you want to get a sharpening surface on this blade, you will have to go and click the little button on cultofthene.com that'll allow you to add the sharpening surface. If it doesn't have the button, just contact us at the customer service. We'll be able to take care of that for you. Take a look at the scabbard. Pretty standard windless design scabbard. Simple, simple, simple leather. You can see it's not wood core, it's just hard leather. Stitching on the back of it. Got some stitching on all the way down. Little steel tip, why? So that way the tip of the sword is protected, doesn't slam through. And of course, a little steel piece where you would draw it. Slides in smoothly, matches everything. You go to that party where everything matches from your steel sword to your uh, handle all the way from your suit. Um, they've got you covered on that. Um, also, the steel tip allows you, if you were to kneel down or if you were sitting down, we're not slamming this obnoxiously into the ground through the leather, especially if the sword was sharp, which in this case it is. Comes out smoothly from the scabbard. Uh, like I said before, it is a cut and thrust sword. Still got a lot of range on the thrust. Overall weight on this blade is two pounds, 3.1 ounces. Like I said before, big slashes. Has a lot of opportunity on thrusting as well. Uh, a lot of power with this type of blade. You just gotta know what you're doing and how to maneuver this properly so then you don't have anything bad happen to you. I mean, so come on, sit. 
it's the holiday season. Going back to the blade, it's really nice and maneuverable. I like the handle, it's really secure in the grip. This is like the first time I'm moving around with it. But now I wanna do is do some close looks out of the scabbard, in the scabbard, and then we're gonna cut some stuff with it. Let's get to it. So I pulled it down, but it's still a pretty deep cut. You can see they're kind of dry, but dude, that's still a pretty damn good cut. All right, we're gonna we're gonna rehang this up and uh, hit it on the forehand and see how it does. You good? Yep. Well, that was much more dramatic this time, and it actually cut it in half. So you can see, blasted the thing in half on that second slash. Yeah, it had a little bit to do with the one before it, but still a pretty good cut. These edges are not as fine as some of the ones on, that you'll see on katanas or like some of the Hanway swords that we've uh, previously done. The edges are more fine, but still a functional edge. So even with these are pulling, it's still doing what it's designed to do. All right, so there you have it, the windless European sword. Do some specs on it, some up close looks at this blade, and uh, it actually cut pretty well. Very broad blade, really, really loud, a lot of range on this as well. If you're looking for a longer, simply designed European sword for your collection, we have these available at clothfifteen.com. Awesome, awesome blade. Uh, if you have any questions or want to comment on what you like about this blade or what you don't like about it, comment below in this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you want a t-shirt, coldwithina.com. The link is in the description below this video for you to check that out. Subscribe. Talk to you soon.